So now let us discuss about the redistribution of charges in two conducting spheres, that is the loss in energy during redistribution of charges. Suppose we have two spheres, let's say this as sphere 1 and this the sphere 2. Let's place these spheres in an isolated stand, on an isolated stand. So that it is separated from the ground so that there is no leakage of charges suppose q1 be the charge q1 be the charge on the first sphere and q2 be the charge on the second sphere both of these possess charges like this and if i say c1 is the capacitance of the first first sphere and C2 that of the second sphere also V1 is the potential difference of the first and V2 be the potential difference of the second then by the relation of charge capacitance and voltage we have Q1 charge Q1 equal to C1 V1 also Q2 Q2 is equal to C2 V2 capacitance times potential will give the charge now what happen what happen if see i draw this again what happen if you connect these spheres let me draw this again what if if i char if i connect these two spheres with a conducting wire any wire with a small resistance or negligible resistance you can see that the charge will distribute because no longer the charge q1 stays here and uh, q2 stays here let q be the total charge and q will be the sum of the charges q1 plus q2 depending upon the size and the redistribu redistribution happens but the total charge system of the tot uh, total charge of the system will be q1 plus q2 now when you connect these two they will attain at a common potential let's say b that is the potential of both these spheres will be same and what we say when the potential of both the spheres or both the capacitance remains the same then we can say that they are in parallel in the parallel case the parallel connection we know voltage remains the same so that the c effective or let's say c effective is the c total capacitance will be the combination in parallel you know if c1 is the capacitance of the we know already written that c1 the capacitance of the first and c2 the capacitance of second so in the parallel combination their effective will be c1 plus c2 okay now we have the uh, potential common potential b will be i'll write it here in the second case the common potential the common potential we can write that as v will be total charge total charge by the total capacitance or total capacitance so that v is equal to we have total charge is equal to q1 plus q2 and we discussed that the effective capacitance will be the total capacitance that will be c1 plus c2 also v is equal to but you know q1 equal to c1 v1 so that c1 v1 plus q2 equal to c2 v2 divided by c1 per c2 let's call this as equation number one now we have the loss in energy or loss of energy let's say delta u will be the initial energy ui minus the final energy that is let's take this is the this is the energy of the initial case and this is the energy of the second case is the energy after redistribution 
So u i minus u f. Now that's equal to, let me erase this. Now the loss in energy delta u will be, we have to find the uh, energy of the first case, that is the total energy, that is the energy of the first capacitance plus energy of the second capacitance. But you know the relation energy equal to half Cv square, here it will be C1 V1 square. We already derived this expression. If you have any doubt, you can always go back and check the video. I'll put the link in the description. Plus half energy of this one equal to C2 V2 square minus what about the energy of the final? Half, you know, C total into the common potential square. Clear. Now, this is equal to, just remember this expression for common potential, I am erasing this. So, delta u will be half c1 v1 square plus half c2 v2 square minus let me erase this. Equal to half C total we have C1 plus C2 into common potential is equal to C1 V1 plus C2 V2 divided by C1 plus C2 whole square. Now we have to simplify this, that is delta u will be, you can write this as half c1 v1 square plus half c2 v2 square plus, sorry, minus 1 by 2 into c1 plus c2. This can be written as c1 v1 plus c2 v2 whole square by c1 plus c2 whole square and now you cancel this one of the c1 plus c2 and if you take if you take 1 by 2 as common delta u is equal to 1 by 2 is common for all that terms so you can take that 1 by 2 also let's take the c1 plus c2 outside there is no C1 plus C2 in the first and second terms. Anyway, you just take that outside. C1 plus C2. So, now we have to introduce. We have to, we already took 1 by 2. C1 V1 square. Now, you have to multiply it with C1 plus C2. Because we took C1 plus C2 as common. Here also, C2 V2 square times C1 plus C2 minus c1 v1 plus c2 v2 whole square. Now, let me simplify this. If you want, you can pause the video and you can do it by yourself. So, 1 by 2 c1 plus c2 into this will be c1 square v1 square plus c1 c2 v1 square plus c1 c2 v2 square plus c2 square v2 square minus you can use a uh, expand this using the whole square that is c1 c1 square v1 square plus c2 square v2 square minus sorry plus 2 c1 c2 v1 v2 that is the term 2 ab this is equal to delta u is equal to half c1 plus c2 on the denominator times c1 v1 square c1 square v1 square plus c1 c2 v1 square plus c1 c2 v2 square 
plus c2 square v2 square minus you can take this negative to the inside of the brackets that, so that minus c1 square v1 square minus c2 square v2 square minus 2 c1 c2 v1 v2 now you can clearly cancel this one and this one also c2 square v2 square the term will get cancelled let me erase this you can take this c1 c2 term outside that is delta u loss of energy will be c1 c2 by 2 into c1 plus c2 times this is equal to v1 square plus uh, there is a v2 square v2 square minus 2 v1 v2 so this is the final expression for the loss of energy this can be rearranged as you can write this as loss of energy delta u is equal to 1 by 2 c1 c2 by c1 plus c2 see this is equal to a square plus b square minus 2ab that is equal to v1 minus v2 whole square so this is the expression for the loss of energy and if you interrogate or if you introspect the loss of energy here this 1 by 2 is always positive c1 capacitance can be negative the capacitor can be negative because there is no meaning in saying a negative capacitance also the difference v1 minus v2 is negative may be positive or negative but the square is always positive that is delta u greater than zero which means there is always a loss in energy or loss of energy is always positive that is also you have delta u equal to initial energy minus final energy that is greater than zero which means the initial energy of the capacitance will be always greater than the final energy because the after redistribution there is a certain amount of energy is lost from the capacitance clear